This is Natasha D'Souza reporting for SALT Voices, and I'm here at the inaugural SALT Abu Dhabi with Professor Nancy Gleason, the Assistant Professor of Practice and Director at the Hillary Ballon Center at NYU Abu Dhabi. Welcome to SALT Abu Dhabi, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today. You are on a panel today dissecting the future of work, something that many worker bees are curious about. Take us through what your main you know, takeaways and nuggets of wisdom were from that discussion today. Sure, so the panelists were fabulous. They're all investing heavily in education technology across the world. Um, everything from Coursera platforms to learning management platforms um, to, to adult driver schools to reskilling nurses. There's, there's a huge task to reskill those whose jobs are changing due to automation. Mm -hmm. And there's a task of educating people in the K through 12 space in a different way um, so that they are ready to be resilient learners. And this is about learning how to learn, not what to learn. And each of the panelists we're coming up with ideas of what are the challenges in these spaces. Um, for example, the scalability of this technology is difficult if the, if the users aren't digitally literate. And then there's also challenges around the quality of the teachers themselves. So okay. we talked with Dino Varki about teacher training. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the future of work, of course, the gig economy continues to grow continue to represent a substantive shift in the way I think our, our relationship, the average person's relationship with the workplace, we may eventually you know, be entering an era where companies are going to need less and less office space because more and more people want to work from home or they want to work from wherever they are. Mm -hmm. I think how do you see that changing in terms of the, I think the, the spaces that workplaces take today you know, in our lives, that whole physical construct and concept of the office, mm. how do you see that potentially changing? Right, I think where there's space to be flexible and brick and mortar, the gig economy is changing when, where, and how we go to work, mm -hmm. but the spaces are also changing. They're much more associative. They're, they're much more conducive to the activity you're going to be doing. So if you're going to be learning at work, which is is a new role that the workforce is taking on, then the space needs to be associated with learning. So flexible, um, able to accommodate different types of people at different times throughout the day, rather than the typical cubicle space. Mm -hmm. But really the future of work is also about how we fill our time because we will be working less. Automation mm -hmm. means that we have more free time and there's new industries that you can develop in that free time and there's new opportunities to develop products that keep people busy during that, that new free time. time. Okay, so we're working less but we're also going to be working differently. So yeah. we'll need a different set of skill sets or competencies. Now, take Sorry. me through that, that, that demarcation. What's yeah. the difference between, say, a competency, a skill, and I think you talked about discipline? Yeah, discipline. So, so at NYU Abu Dhabi, my job is to train the teachers to help students learn how to learn, not what to learn. Okay. So the disciplines matter. Chemistry, history, theater, those disciplines matter, but it's how you can associate them to each other that's valuable in the workplace, mm. because you're not going to have just one job. You're not going to have just one career. And so you need to be able to transfer your knowledge from one context to the next. In order to do that, you need to be aware of your own thinking and your own capacities beyond the books you've read and the knowledge you have. Okay. So this is a task that industry is taking on as well to help employees understand where their skills are. So maybe you majored in biology as an undergraduate, True. but that means you have problem solving skills. Science is problem solving. But if you don't know that about yourself, you don't have that metacognitive awareness, then you're not going to be as effective in the workplace. So in, in a sense, understanding your superpower, like what is that thing that you can leverage in different kinds of disciplines and places of Exactly. Of so work. the disciplines matter because you need to know how to manipulate them. Mm. But the disciplines are not the end. They're the mm. beginning. Okay. And that's a shift in education. And it's a shift for adults our age who have to go back to school and learn new things, who were told that... Um, you know, zero through 24 was enough education to ride you out. Right. It's not. We all have to go back to school in some form. How are, I think, companies addressing that with, you know, their workforce? At the end of the day, we do know that today people spend a shorter amount of time at their employers than they did, say, even 10, 15, 20 years ago. We're no longer going to be somewhere for 15, 20, 30 years. So how do companies approach this in terms of investing in their employees to make them relevant for the jobs that they're doing and the jobs they could grow into, but knowing fully well that you're pretty much teaching them and they may leave because sure. they're now more competitive. Right, especially in the gig economy and, and Gen Zs, they, they like project-based work and then they tend to move on. So part of the hope there is that each firm will do its part to train 
and that you'll get the next person rotating through that cycle. Okay. That's one model that people are anticipating. But overall, industry is filling the gaps that education hasn't been able to fill, where there's a quality or an access problem. Industry has been the one that's used corporate education and professional education to upskill and reskill and unlearn okay. for its own employees. And a lot of the discussions on the panel I was on today at SALT are about how industry can empower itself to address the talent gaps. Are there any it's companies that are doing something especially exciting there, you know, as, as yeah, I in mean, terms of corporate um, education? There are a ton. Um, so the Varkey Foundation and GEMS Global Education is working in the brick and mortar scale space, which is very interesting. But they're also doing a blended learning online adult education thing in the MENA region with Talal where they are upskilling and reskilling employees. So they become a, the industry hires the firm to reskill. It's, it's private education. Mm -hmm. But a lot of firms are bringing this in-house. So for example, Visa University has opened a campus in Singapore. Mm -hmm. um, a go to outside has a new learning space for adults in its headquarters and in Southeast Asia. And these, these corporations are building learning spaces to, because it's much easier to reskill an existing employee than to find one that can do what you need them to do. Okay. The pace of change of the technology is so intense that you have to be reskilling your, your employees pretty much every six months. Okay, wow. Thank you so much for what you've shared with us today. It's been really exciting speaking you. with you. Thank you. It's been very exciting to be at SALT. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you.